Welcome to Become. I'm Courtney Koenig, igniting your human design to become a powerful, profitable, purposeful boss of your business, of your career, and of your life. We have the most amazing guest on today. Cynthia Stant is joining us today. And Cynthia is a self-made millionaire, sales consultant to seven-figure CEOs. She has tapped into her financial and business-oriented and metaphysical discipline background to start a path for luxurious, hardworking, successful, beast-like women like herself to follow and thrive. Um, after six months, she was pulling in six figures. She is a spiritual success mentor to female leaders and is determined to help them connect to their powerful inner feminine beast. Cynthia, welcome to Become. Thank you so much for being on today. I'm so excited for this. Thank you for the opportunity. Seriously, I'm excited. This is this will be great. I am excited. You're new to human design, so we're gonna go through your design chart. But first of all, I really want to get to know the coaches as they come on. Um, before we dive into your chart, what is a favorite book or show that you've been into lately? Lately, um, you know what's funny? I actually read the same books again and again and again. I don't really read new ones. I always think that if you become a master of something, you don't read 60 books, you read the same book again and again. So I'm a huge Neville Goddard fan. I read it every single morning, um, his full collection. It's, it's funny, I actually gifted it to my husband for our anniversary two years ago. And he makes fun of me because I totally stole it and read it all the time. But um, don't watch my TV, but I will tell you, I binge watched a few episodes last night it takes a lot for me for some reason to laugh at TV, but I laugh at every single episode of Modern Family. Like it never gets old. <laughs> My husband and I were just like relaxing last night and I just could not stop geeking out. It's so I love that show. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I'm going to have to check out that series. Um, I've heard good things about it too. So, so many Emmys, but uh, Sofia Vergara, she makes it for me. <laughs> oh, she's, she's hilarious. She's sexy. She's powerful. <laughs> she's funny as hell. I love that woman. She is. Um, okay. So where is um, a favorite place that you've traveled to? Like, where's your favorite place to go to? It's so easy. Cause I just did it recently. It was the trip of a life. Um, we already plan on going back, but I just recently uh, had my 10 year wedding anniversary and yes. we renewed our vows in a castle in Scotland. And no way. Amazing. So I guess that really is my other favorite show. I haven't watched it in a long time, but I'm an Outlander fan. I mean, come on, it's it's metaphysical, it's time travel, it's history, and there's hot men and kilts. So it's it's a good show. It's a really good show. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, that is a really good no, show. He didn't wear kilt. He did not wear kilts, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have always wanted to go to Scotland. My husband and I have been to Europe, but you know, it's so big and there's so many places. Yeah. I've heard so many good things about Scotland. So that I it looks good. It, the people were so friendly oh. the places I cried I, my first castle and we went to like 20 of them I, I was just couldn't believe it oh, it's so it's, just it's, culture. yeah it's feeling the energy of the place right like the history the what's been there before we actually we hit a wall <laughs> driving on the left side of the road and we my husband did great they have all these turnabouts where you go in circles and circles and I, the whole time I was just like he's doing great he's doing great but um, when we were on the country road, I don't know what happened. He just slipped and we got a flat fire and it was the most magical thing because we just sat outside and looked at the stars and only eight cars passed us the entire hour and a half. But every single car stopped and said, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you need support? And like, I was just like, wow. And so it actually was a nice little adventure that that happened. So, but yeah, it, it's just a beautiful place. And I definitely plan on going back. Oh, that's a magical, you know, and it's magical to get away and to just feel the beauty of another place. So, oh, okay. That's on my list. <laughs> oh, so your chart is beautiful. Your chart has so many amazing gifts and we're going to go throughout your chart, the pieces of your chart that really stood out to me. Now, my gift as a projector, I have, um, and we kind of talked about this. I have a lot of open centers. And so I can really feel and sense what the message that needs to come into play. I can really understand the thoughts that are happening that are not spoken and really connect that with a voice. 
we look at the um the model of like being aware of who we are right accepting who we are and then doing action steps with that what i take with human design is we're always in action we're always taking what we know we're accepting that and we're using that for good so that we can have every bit of an alignment that is offered to us and everyone um everybody's chart is beautiful and as they tap into those beautiful gifts things accelerate even more. And that satisfaction and that contentment with the process accelerates even more. So um, human design it, um, gives you a chart based on your birth information and that shares with you those gifts. So it's becoming this deep sense of belonging to yourself, this deep acceptance and tingling um, fears or uncovering skills that maybe we didn't resonate with or we're like, oh, well, that was... I. I I, that comes easy to me. So it's not that special. Well, human design is like, yes, that's special. We're going to tap into that even more. So you are a manifester and a manifester is one of the five design types. So you are a natural born go-getter. You have a vision of what can be done. You are a catalyzing force. You make things happen. And it's interesting, manifestors are the only design type that can initiate and just create because they have like a manifester manifesting things. They have this ability to just follow this urge that's coming within them and to go and start to make things happen. And so oftentimes the people that are surrounding manifestors are like, wait, wait, what is she, what is she doing next? What's happening? Wait, what was going on? And they're like, yeah, they can't keep up. And you're like, come on, make it happen. You know? Um, but you seek to achieve and you seek to lead. You're born with this ign ignition switch that's always on. Mm -hmm. um, now, as you're this natural leader, as you're this embodiment of manifestation, you have this big aura. And or is this, you know, this energy that's surrounding us. Um, I tell my clients, I'm like, hey, your energy speaks before you even open your mouth. Absolutely. It's already there. So embracing this big, this bigness of yours, being this movement starter and not allowing people to micromanage you because it manifestors that get micromanaged. That's, no. that's bad. <laughs> so your tagline, when I was um, reading more about you and getting to know you more, your tagline is this inner feminine beast, which I love so much and is such a manifester thing to say, right? You're taking up space. You're creating this um, energetic awareness of everybody who comes in contact with you with this tagline. So manifestors are often conditioned to play small, right? To not vocalize what they're thinking or feeling because they've been told, you know, hey, you know, um, no one really wants to hear from you or, or hey, um, that's way too big. Could you pull it down? You know, that type of thing. So this vocalization and this movement is your true alignment. Mm -hmm. So as you step at, and you have stepped into that and you are expanding your business even more and more and having this reach. I know we're speaking at a same conference and you have your own conference coming up. It's yeah. a beautiful thing to see you in motion as a manifester. So how did you work through maybe those ideas of playing it small or not being able to vocalize to become this uh, leader of seven figure CEOs? Yeah, girl, I got fired. <laughs> That's what it took. No, um, I'm a very spiritual woman myself, very intuitive. And, um, you know, sometimes you really want something, but you make other people's dreams first, or that's too scary. Or how many, how is that going to happen? What's the next move? And uh, I heard it from the universe. I believe that, you know, we're always getting the sign. We're always having the answer put right in front of us, but sometimes we have free will. We ignore it. And I joke around and I say, it's tap, tap, shake, shake, punch, or some people will say feather, brick, bus, you know, God, the universe was constantly telling me like, Cynthia, you're supposed to have your own company. You're supposed to do this. You have a bigger, you know, impact to make. You have more people to serve. I was so moving up my corporate ladder that I just kept making somebody else's dreams happen. I was hiding behind, you know, somebody else's brand and image. And then one day, unbeknownst to me, just blindsided, I was fired from my, um, really high earning corporate position. Um, and you know what? It's for me, by me. And it was time. 
And uh, I decided to do things really big starting day one of starting my own company. So yeah, it's pretty cool. We, we've had a lot of success since then, but it's being in alignment and really, like you said, speaking my truth and, and creating a brand that is the essence of my soul that's had such a big impact. I love that creating a brand that's the essence of your soul. And so oftentimes, especially in this social media realm, um, as people are coming into this, um, they're like, well, I guess, you know, I'll be like this person or I'll be like that person. You see a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you show your clients to be like themselves, right? Absolutely. Um, I always tell people there's no system, no strategy, no coach, no program outside of you is ever going to be the source to your success or happiness. And my job as your mentor is not to give you the system. It's help you to channel your system. What is wanting to come to and through you and emerge here in the physical? And my job working with so many, you know, six, multiple six, seven, and even eight figure entrepreneurs is I've seen a lot of things that work and a lot of things that don't. So let's have a smorgasbord, a buffet of options, which one feels right with you, aligned with you so that we can take the right aligned actions to get the aligned results. So I'm here to help you decide what feels best with your higher self, your inner feminine beast. Right. And the way you've done that so much is by doing that on your own, you know, by lining up with who you really are and going full force with that. No yeah. holding back, no fears, just taking it to the next level. So as a manifester, um, one of your challenges is not having this endless amounts of energy, like to do all, all the things, right? So you've got to create support systems in your life and work. Um, or otherwise that burnout will come in. And I know you're a mom and I know you have family, you know, so we look at all the things that are pulling you in those all directions, personally and professionally as well. Now, communication is everything for manifestors as well. Communicating like where you're going, you feel this kind of intuitive urge to do something. And so you just start going for it, you know? So it's really creating this, um, hey team, I'm surrounded by a team. Uh, personally and professionally, and I'm communicating with them, where are we going? Where are we headed to next? Um, where, what's the vision that's coming next? Instead of, you know, like, um, hey, just, you know, try and keep up because that creates this disconnect with you as well. So how have you created this support in your personal and professional life, as well as um, diving into like, come on guys, here's where in my vision and here's where I want to go next. Well, being the CEO of a company, and this is for everyone, your job is to be the visionary, it's to be the leader, it's to be the shot caller. And it's not being like stuck in the maze and reacting. It's really having a full big picture and sharing that vision with the team so that they can get behind it and, and create that momentum with you. We're stronger together. And the more successful you become, the more support you need to have, not just in the physical by delegating to a team, but with my spirit squad. Like my business partner is God. And I have conversations every single day and remind myself to be supported. But the whole point of IFB and my, the brand is really mm -hmm. being a woman who's super intentional. Like everything I do is about looking for the biggest return. So I, my thoughts, I can't focus on doubts because where is that going to bring me? Wherever I focus, it creates momentum. So I'm very intentional about th thinking the right thoughts. I'm very intentional, obviously, about where my money goes, right? I'm very intentional about my relationships. I have very high standards and it's not about quantity for me. It's about the people who are here to support my vision, really protect my dream. And together we tie our whole vision in together to create a bigger impact. So yeah, I'm very intentional. Um, I'm, I'm very comfortable hiring the actors and firing the actors in my life because I believe I'm the director. Yes, <laughs> right. Well, and what you said about um, we are the vision keepers of our brand, that is the most important task we have to do every single day. And that vision of the brand comes from within us. So oftentimes um, my students and potential students, they're like, oh, I'm not pouring into myself very much. You know, I'm not giving myself what I need. And I'm like, okay, well, here's the system I have to pour into yourself to create that vision because everybody is their X factor in their business. Yeah. Everybody has that position and some people just discount it and don't recognize how vital it is to keep that flame going bright, huge. I was working with a mentor one time and she's told me so many beautiful things, but during a particular training uh, session that we had, I remember she said something that was just like a gold nugget and it really sat with me. 
she said, a brand is a promised experience. And when she said that, I really thought about my favorite brands and I joke around, but I think of like Disney because I'm a Florida girl. I have my passes, got my boys. We go all the time oh. and Disney, you know, with him, I'm willing to invest thousands of dollars because every time I go, I know it's going to be a magical day, a magical experience. The landscaping is going to be top notch. The, you know, the, the, everyone's going to be smiling at you. No one ever says have a mediocre day. Like that never happens, you know? So I really right. thought about, wow, what is my brand? And that's when, uh, you know, my higher self came through it's inner feminine beast. And so that way I'm always the same all the time. And authenticity is absolutely key in this world of, you know, polished, everything being perfect. People sitting on Ferraris with duck lips, like acting like that's their every day. Like, you know what I mean? Like People want that real emotional connection and that's what earns trust. And if you're going to be successful in business, you need to have trust from your people. So yeah, I just look at my brand as that promise experience. And I'm the same with my clients as I am with my friends, as I am meeting you and, you know, my children, everybody. So it's the essence of who you are, the essence of your soul. Yeah. That's your brand. That's your brand. Your soul is your brand. Yes. Now, another part of your chart that stood out to me, um, is your profile and it's on the top where it tells your type and a profile is made up of two numbers four and a six is your profile and the first number is the way you see yourself and the next number is the way others see you oftentimes we have this like blind spot for how do others see us and so this is a really um unique tool to tap into that to utilize that even more so you are a people person <laughs> That is the number four, a people person. You're gifted at bonding with people. The quality of life is determined by the relationships in your life. And it's funny that you just mentioned that. Yep. <laughs> that is a, a core strength and gift of yours. And once you find your people, you hug them and hold on to them and link arms with them tightly and Absolutely. connect with them. And those people that are not your people, you know how to curate them and put them off to the side because they're not part of your vision. They're not part of your energy. Now the six is a way, a wise sage. You have this innate wisdom. You're wise to life. You look inside of yourself and you have the answers all within of you. Um, others are meant to see you as a role model. And the, when the four and the six come together, you're the central influencer figure. You direct with a huge heart. You're open to that heart for those sharing of those wisdoms that you have gathered and sharing those with others. Um, and the more that you lean into that, the more that those show up and then the more that those connect with others across the world. So how has these gifts shown up in your business? Well, you know what? I always say that it's not about pleasing everybody. You know, like, so I'm really an expert at sales and, um, what it is, it's not about, for instance, like pricing, for instance, I'll say it's not about having something that's a hundred dollars and selling that to a thousand people. It's about having something that's a thousand dollars and selling that to a hundred people, your people. And that's not the strategy because you need to charge more. You want to attract people who are really committed to doing the work that I believe I have a soul contract with every client I've ever had, do have, and will have. And I'm not here to just skim like and talk to the masses. It's not like, hi, everybody. I'm here that help women too. No, it's like, I'm here to help you because you're the woman who's looking to have a life where you are deeply satisfied. And I talked directly to my people when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And so I'm here to help the woman who truly is. And so I think it's important to not just be about quantity. My business has never been about quantity. We've had a lot of success and it's all about quality of the right women, because I truly believe that my client's success is my success. And together, like we are committed to this, the results. And so I've always said, it's about pure connection. It's about authenticity. It's about transparency. And it's about really, I say no to people all the time. I want to work with the right people that really value me, my, my standards, my boundaries, and that are really committed to this process. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty spot on, you know? Yeah. Isn't this crazy all from a date of birth? I mean, it, like, well, do you ever say anything bad so far? I'm like, this is great. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know it's crazy. Um, all right. So on your chart and I showed you your chart before we got on, we looked at that body graph and it had all those uh, defined centers that are colored in and those undefined centers that are white. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the defined centers 
they and the undefined centers, they all have a job to do. And the defined centers, we always have these gifts with us always. So we can lean on those gifts when we're taking next steps, when we're, um, you know, reaching out with clients and all those things, right? So your centers, you have the throat center, which is communication and manifestation. Mm -hmm. You have the G center, which is identity and self-love. You have the solar plexus, which are emotions. Emotions, we can think, okay, emotions are so good in business, right? This new way of doing business is emotional, right? We connect with people. Mm -hmm. um, we, we make those emotions work with us um, and help us drive our passion and our business. Um, the root is the drive. So this drive, this innate, like, oh, I've got to do this. You know, it's backing you up. And the spleen is your intuition and your senses, now you have a lot of powerful gifts coming from the spleen, which is your intuition and senses. And your business has these roots in spirituality and manifestation. How has this powerful gift of intuition helped you um, as you coach and guide others? Yeah, so I don't know if you know this about me, but um, I actually went to the school of college, excuse me, the College of Metaphysical Studies. And um, through that was certified as an intuitive practitioner, which is actually the professional way of saying psychic medium. So back in the day, before I got really big into the sales game, um, I was a professional psychic and I was very connected to my intuition. What happened to me though, was that I realized a lot of people who were coming to me and I was booked for three months out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I realized though, it wasn't fulfilling because a lot of people kept coming back, having the same reading. They weren't taking any aligned action to get a different result, or they were relying on me. Like I was some kind of superhuman. And I'm like, you can do these too. I just disciplined myself to have a spiritual practice to really, you know, work on meditation and to actually trust in my intuition and, and go with it. And so that's when I really started my company differently. So I'm not just about sales and strategies and structures. I'm all about having aligned, uh, purposeful, meaningful impact in your business. So honestly, I've been such a successful person at sales because I know how to connect with people energetically before, you know, just looking at it physically. I understand people buy off of emotion. So I'm helping them to see the end result. So use the law of assumption to see what we're working for and get clarity on that. And then just really connect with people. I can honestly know before you even open your mouth or before we touch, like, or connect to me, um, if you're the person, like I can feel the zing. Like, you know, I'm like, I ask myself, like, is this the person, my soul contract? And I'll know. And if so, like, I'm going to reach out. And of course it's up to you if you want to keep moving, but I like know my people and that's a big part of it. Yeah. How, <laughs> yeah. How, what is that intuition that yes feel like? Cause so oftentimes people are kind of muddy with their mind overthinks things. They're like stuck in a place of fear, but how, when you're in that intuition and the intuition is saying yes, what is the language? What is that feeling that surrounds that? It's, it's interesting because we get confused. I, I teach a lot about meditation because um, it's important to learn how to control your thoughts. So your thoughts aren't controlling you. When you get an intuitive download, um, you have to realize it's, it sounds like your own voice, but it's different. It doesn't come from you. It comes to you. So, you know, you don't know what's going to come out of my mouth next. And that's kind of what it's like. It's like, I could say hamburger, I could say cheetah, like you don't know. And all of a sudden that comes and you're like, what is that? Where is that coming from? And um, so you get used to the feeling of understanding the difference of receiving versus coming up with. And when I receive, I hear it. And then I just sense where is my body. And it's really, if, I, don't, I need to come up with it. It's words can't describe the feeling because words are limiting. But if I was to say a word, it's, it's zing. It's like a, there she is flash. Like that's the, that's the woman that I'm here to help. It's like, we remember each other. We know each other. We decided yeah. before we came here, like we're going to do some serious work together and we're going to create a huge impact. Yes. Like says, when you give, you're certainly allowed to receive too. <laughs> so yes, yeah. right. right. Well, and it's being in tune with that. It's allowing that intuition to speak instead mm -hmm. of overthinking it or instead of you know, working around it. It's like human design teaches us to listen to our body, yeah. listen to our body. And it gives us tools in order to listen to that. But that like that zing, almost like a lightning flash, you know, like it's, so, it's so funny. I've actually taught a lot of my clients on how to understand the zing too. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, but I would say about 95% of my clients don't even have console calls. They just know, like they like can watch enough. They can sense it. 
maybe have a DM back or a little voice message and boom, there they are. And these are usually multiple five figure investments, but like they just know. And it's, it's, that's what I mean. It's not just, Hey, you please, 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 please come on. Like, let me convince you. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm here to convey my message, share my truth and really attract the women who I already know are waiting for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're waiting for you. Exactly. Uh, one of your other gifts that stood out to me is in your chart, there's channels and channels are kind of like pathways from one energy center to another, and they contain gifts and characteristics that we can lean into. Um, yours is a 2057. That's the throat to the spleen. So again, your communication and manifestation to your intuition and your senses. And this is a nose for the future. You're this effervescent truth teller. You think on your feet, you speak on your feet. Yeah. I like that you're laughing. <laughs> so great. You're smiling. You're like, yes, you communicate it and you share this truth with others. And that's a critical part of who you are and a critical gift of who you are. The other channel that you have is the 1020. And this is the, from the G center, which is identity and self-love to the throat. So again, that communication and manifestation, this is a love of life. This is again, this effervescent truth teller, a voice of self-love to the world, which is so needed at this point and at this time. And you speak it to others and they can feel that. And that's with your DMs, you're like, yeah, we're magic. Let's go. You know, that your clients can feel that because that's your gift. That's your strength. Um, and how, but how do you help your clients to stand in their own truth, to make these six and seven figures? How do you share this gift with them? Well, I mean, I always say that, you know, I'm, I'm here to be your biggest cheerleader, but get ready, mama. I'm here to shake you with love too. Like, and I believe that all growth comes from getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And when I speak and when I talk, it's again, not a lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, she's intense or whoa, she's like too much. But like my women love that you know, like they identify with that. And like, that's who I'm here to help is somebody who's not here to dabble or try or figure out, or just be pat on the back and told they're perfect all the time. You're not going to get anywhere. And so, you know, once I really figured out how to speak to my people and, and like say my truth, I realized like, this is everything. Authenticity again is what converts. And so my important thing to my clients all the time is to tell them what feels right for you. I had a one-on-one -on -one the other day with a brand new client and right away she was like, Cynthia, I need to work on my discipline. I need to work on my discipline because I'm all about discipline. I, I think discipline is freedom really. And I don't mean like punishment. I mean, like I have more fun than anybody else. Cause when I'm off, I'm off. And when I'm in it, I'm in it. But she said to me, I'm not disciplined. I'm not disciplined. And I said, well, why, why do you think that? And she says, well, cause I keep setting my alarm for 5.00 AM. And it's just like, I can't get up. And I, I guess I'm not really wanting this. And I was like, girl, I don't wake up till 7:30 ish. Cause I don't have an alarm. Why do you think you need to do that? Oh, because that person does it. And that person, again, no one, nothing outside of you is the source of your success or happiness. And you can't take care of other people if you're not fulfilling yourself. So what does it mean to feel good for you? I don't work on Fridays. I, I go on vacation every single month. I don't wake up at a certain time. I don't start my day until at least nine 30. Like some people will say that's completely against the possibility of having a brand new company and reaching multiple six figures in the first six months. No, it's possible if you do it in alignment. And we, you and I were talking about that before we got started. You find out what really is, works for you and boom, things change, flow and ease. Flow and ease. Well, and that's exactly right. As a manifester, you don't have this natural like sacral energy, which is the energy center that powers work and life. Um, and so you have to renew that. So for you, sleep is critical. Oh, I'm, yeah. wait, I'm like, if I don't get my nine hours of sleep, I can't, I can't think I can't function, you know, like, but I used to always think of myself as well. Why can't I get up at that 5am? You know, what's wrong with me and comparison myself to other people. But again, when we live our design, when we really look at what are our needs that are coming from inside, we can internalize that and use that as actionable intelligence to be like, oh yeah, I, this is my need. This is what I need. This is how I operate. And then everything goes into flow, right? So I'm the same with you. I don't set an alarm and I get up when I get up. And, but my practice is in six different countries throughout the world. Yeah. And again, I, and I was telling you, I've been sick for like three fourths of that time. So there's magic in living who we are 
in living with that alignment is everything in this human design gives us a powerful tool to say, yes, this is you get it together. You got this, you know, you can use this. Yes. Yep. Cynthia, this has been amazing. So I would love to hear where people can find you, where they can coach with you, where they can connect. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so it's pretty easy on all social media. I'm really big on Facebook. We're growing on Instagram. Um, YouTube's up and running. It's just at Cynthia Stant. Um, the website's super easy, CynthiaStant.com. And we just started our brand new Facebook group because we rebranded everything in my company. We're evolving, we're growing. Um, brand new Facebook group. We're having a lot of uh, complimentary master classes in there, workshops, interviews, all the things. Um, and it's called inner feminine beast. That is the Facebook group. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is like a statement we should all say every single day of our lives. You know, it's just extraordinary and have so much power and energy. I'm so excited um, that we connected. I'm so excited that we get to speak at the same conference at gold digger, like a yeah. gold digger. And uh, awesome. <laughs> yes, she is the best and so amazing. So Thank you, Cynthia, for being on today. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us um, and your amazing manifester energy. And I'm grateful to have you on today. Yes, this was very awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Very cool. And thanks for all your listeners. Appreciate it. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks. All right. We'll see you.